look who dropped in to say hello. Yes, it's Nemesis, your, well, Nemesis in Resident Evil 3. And he looks lip smackingly good, or he would if he had lips. Perhaps his new flamethrower melted them. Better that than an accident with the rocket launcher he aimed at Jill Valentine in 1999's Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. You'll note that Capcom removed his name from the new title, pity the producer who had to break it to him, but this gameplay from a work in progress build shows he's just as vital a presence as he ever was. His arson habit is one of several alterations. This remake builds on its original more dramatically than Resident Evil 2 did last year. I've played a chunk of the game and its new multiplayer mode, Resident Evil Resistance, and will break down the good and the bad, preparing you for the game to come on April the 3rd, day after my birthday. Hmm, I wonder which is scarier, being stalked by Nemesis or old father time? Perhaps you could give this video a like as an early birthday present. Anyway, onwards. Here's the big man pre-barbecue, Nemesis. Eight feet of muscle, the nose of a bloodhound, and very little regard for doors. The real victim of Resident Evil 3 is the poor sap whose living room just got a new window. For the uninitiated, Nemesis is released by Umbrella to hunt and kill the remaining members of Stars. In the original game, he was a constant threat, spawning in various locations based on past choices and chasing you down. You could stand and fight, but you'd only ever temporarily put him off Jill's scent. In 2020, Nemesis is instantly supercharged by more flowing world design. While he could chase Jill through loading doors in 1999, there's a more convincing sense of this being a deadly chase around the connected streets of Raccoon City. He still throws a mean right hook, but can also lasso Jill with a tentacle, a mutation he didn't get until much later in the original. His scariest new trick is a bullish rush that barges is passed and blocks your path, forcing you to pull off a split second dodge or re-evaluate your escape route. He's also got a new move which empowers regular zombies, which is really interesting, but something I can't mention without Capcom's lawyers releasing their own bio-organic weapon after me. Understandable, part of the fun for returning fans is seeing the big fella pull a surprise out of his coat. One weakness with Nemesis is that some of his classic moves were given to Mr. X in the Resident Evil 2 remake last year. He was one of the best things about that game, the way he stomped after you looking like an angry Tic Tac in a hat, but it also borrowed some of Nemesis's magic to deliver those thrills. The oh shit moment of Nemesis coming through a door or appearing in your path is a little less exciting because we did this whole song and dance just one year ago. Yes. He his speed is different and he's more aggressive in his attacks, but the general idea feels, I don't know, safer? Although saying that, having him out in the open does allow Nemesis to drop from rooftops, which is suitably bowel loosening. Capcom also differentiate their two brutes with more reliance on set pieces in Resident Evil 3. There are linear chase sequences where Jill ducks and weaves through tight corridors and hammers quick time buttons to prize open escape routes, or a scene set inside a burning building, but they feel a lot more scripted and a lot less exciting as a result. When you're escaping in the streets it feels like it's your game to lose, while elsewhere you're hitting cues to escape in one piece. It reminds me more of running from the Ustanak in Resident Evil 6, and I'm not sure anyone really wants that, although I will give the fiery encounter credit for a cheesy boss battle that made me feel nostalgic, you know, shooting an incredibly unsubtle flame tank on Nemesis's back and then waiting for his really irate phase to empty precious flame grenades in his face. It's old school, but I dig it and hope for more of these intense one-on-one -on -one encounters. Away from Nemesis, terrified pedestrians run for their lives, and it's easy to see why. The streets of Raccoon City are so much more intense than they were in the original or the Resident Evil 2 remake. Or perhaps they're escaping from the freaky face of Toy Uncle. I would never let my kid go to a shop called Toy Uncle. 
sounds shady as hell. Anyway, in Resident Evil 2, I actually found the external areas really underwhelming. It was one of the bigger criticisms of my review, which you can watch by clicking in the top right now. For me, the exteriors lacked the detail and character of the interiors, and felt like empty placeholders between main missions. Remember fighting these dogs on an empty basketball court? probably the least scary 30 seconds in Resident Evil history. The streets serve a bigger role in Resident Evil 3 and are given more love as a result, packed with colourful shops that give a great sense of Raccoon City as a functioning place gone to hell, but also loads of crashed cars and collapsed debris to give zombies places to jump out from, while also rediscovering the claustrophobia missing in Resident Evil 2's outside. There are tight alleys where you root interrupt deadheads having some dinner and have to get up close and personal, although uh, hopefully not this up close and personal. But the wider streets are no safer, what with zombies pounding at fences that could, and will, collapse, forcing you into sudden hordes that push your bullet management to the test. Although you don't see it in this footage, there is a lot more toing and froing in the streets. There are gun mods and inventory expansions that require you to solve puzzles using information found in multiple shops, and the game gives you bolt cutters and a lockpick to entice you back to doors and gates you couldn't unlock earlier. Like the similarities between Nemesis and Mr. X, some of this feels like playing an expansion pack for Resident Evil 2 rather than a standalone venture. You rely on these same tricks, dumping puzzle parts into item crates, knowing they'll teleport to crates nearer the puzzle solution, say, or over-relying on safe room typewriters. I found our demo played very easy after Resident Evil 2, which is odd as it pitches itself as a fiercer action experience. Weirdly, I think it's the action-y mechanics that make it feel easier. Jill has a dodge for swooping past zombie lunges and darting past Nemesis. A similar dodge was added to Jill's tank controls back on PlayStation 1, but it's easier with a modern over-the-shoulder camera. Time it right and you get a burst of speed, letting you quickly swivel and plug your attacker as they realign themselves. Much more deadlier are red explosive barrels littering the streets, somewhat in probably given how much of the place is already on fire. A well-placed bullet here can wipe out any nearby zombie, frying them in the process so that they don't get back up. While there is an art form to kiting a large group of enemies towards barrels, it is easy enough to clear out most of Raccoon City's main streets with just a couple of bullets. I ended up with so many handgun bullets, I was having to empty them into their inventory boxes to make room for more. Slightly more interesting are fizzing electrical outlets shoot these and you stun nearby zombies, either softening them up for easy headshots or sprinting past them. These are particularly useful against the quick dogs, sadly not in this capture, and play more of a role in running away from Nemesis, as a street of stunned zombies is much easier to scamper through, but even with a slow recharge time I found these to be overpowered. I wonder if they maybe need to adjust the bullet pickups to find a bit more tension. In other places, the fiercer action momentum really helps sex up some creaky sections. A great example is the substation. Power needs to be pumped to the subway system, and back in 1999, this meant a lot of tedious button pushing to open doors, balance out voltages, and oh god, I can see viewer engagement plummeting the more I show this. Skip to 2020, and the substation is now a deadly hive of drain demos, basically what happens when a flea gets a dose of the T-Virus. They were in the original, but were slightly daft leaping creatures. In the remake, they scuttle over floors and ceilings, swinging their claws at you. What this footage doesn't show is a horrible new trick, where they latch onto Jill's face and puke up baby insects into her stomach. It's got big face hugger energy. Where's Sigourney Weaver when you need her, eh? Oh, she probably works here on the main street. Weird. Once impregnated with fleas, Jill is slower and her view obscured by throbbing veins on screen. She's open to attacks unless she can gobble a green herb and puke up the creatures inside. It turns a simple labyrinth into a weird resource management puzzle as you hunt for transformers while trying not to guzzle down your green herb supply. It's one of the few bits in the demo with a very different rhythm to anything in Resident Evil 2 and I'm hoping for more scenes like it. 
Oh, and while we're talking monster makeovers, look what they've done to the mutant tadpole hunter creatures. It looks like Bubblegum that tries to chew you. Easy enough to dispatch with a grenade launcher, but a one-hit kill if it gets close. Creepy stuff. And if I sound slightly down on Resident Evil 3, I should still say it's a classy production. The way it drags corny cutscenes into the 21st century with slick character animation is a treat, and it's great to see flimsy characters like Carlos turned from cringy pickup artists. I know, you wanna ask me out? All the foxy ladies love my accent, it drives them crazy. Two slightly more well rounded characters. I'm fine. Personal space. Okay, I get it. Let's go. Although one who still finds time for the odd pickup line. But it's no zombie. He knows what it wants and won't stop till it gets it. Don't you like that in a man? Okay, maybe he is a bit skeezy. You mean the alley that's on fire? Maybe. Surely a tall drink of water like yourself can put out a few flames. Okay, a lot skeezy. It's just that having explored the dank sewers and grim subterranean tunnels just 12 months ago, some of it is bound to seem a little less fresh. That said, I'd certainly take the campaign over the new Resident Evil Resistance multiplayer mode that comes with the game, a strange addition that has a completely different pace and tone to the main game. The quick pitch, a team of four prisoners have to survive and escape three challenges set by a mastermind, controlled by a fifth player. The challenges are simple, but designed to split the group. In the casino stage, you have to collect three items scattered across the stage, a simple scavenger hunt. In round two, you have to find a security card zombie, kill him and use his keycard to access three terminals. But it's a tangle of rooms, so you need to first split up to find the guard and the keycard stations before uniting to solve the task. Finally, you bash tanks of evil Umbrella Corporation goo, but there are multiple tanks and only one is open at any given time time, again forcing you to divide and conquer. Of course, a divided team is exactly what the mastermind wants. This villain views the level through security cameras, using a deck of cards to select traps and monsters to place at will. For me, this meant hedging my bets on a single nightmare room, picking a room with a key objective and filling it with every monster I possibly could, placing bear traps next to doors and using hacking powers to lock the door and turn off the lights as soon as a victim stumbled in. You see, I quickly discovered the key to success wasn't trying to wipe out the entire team, but to waste as much of their time in early stages as possible. Creating one room full of horrible monsters got them every single time. Best of all, you charge up energy to unleash a boss monster, letting you step into the horribly mutated shoes of Resident Evil 2's William Birkin, for example, whacking people with a massive pipe as they scramble for the exit. What feels chaotic and messy when playing as the prisoners feels delightfully mischievous fun when you're dishing it out. I think a problem it's going to have is convincing people to sign up as escapees when the villain role is that much more enjoyable. A lot of thought has gone into Resistance, choosing to play as a brawler or a trap laying kid in probably named Martin Sandwich or as Sweet D from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia results in very different experiences, especially with Sweet D's hacking, turning off the mastermind's cameras and leaving them at a disadvantage. And there's a substantial unlock tree to shape these characters, and the masterminds, to reward people who get stuck in. But it does have the smell of one of those cute high concept deals that plays fine during early hours of novelty and then you never go back to it. Maybe it's just memories of getting bored with the man versus monster action of Evolve, or perhaps that we played on PS4s, where a sluggish frame rate renders the action horribly unresponsive. I mean, you can see from this capture that it's a bit of a horror show. I just didn't come away with a feeling that I'd ever play it again. And that's a shame, as there's a big multiplayer-shaped hole in Resident Evil, one that used to be filled by the egg-throwing shenanigans of Mercenaries mode. The hours lost to Resident Evil 5's co-op Mercenaries were unreal. I'm not sure why they don't just have another go at that. Yes, getting to play as Mr. X is a dream come true. I'll never look this good in a hat myself, but I'm not sure it's got 
the appeal that Capcom are betting on, but it's only another month until you get to test it for yourself and see if you fall wildly in love with it. My only concern is that Resistance is bundled in because the campaign will be that much shorter. Resident Evil 3 was a brisk game back on PS1 and doesn't have the dual campaign structure that stretches out Resident Evil 2. Impossible to say for sure until we jump into the final thing, but probably worth holding off on pre-orders until reviews come in. I just hope Capcom don't send out an angry bioweapon to hunt anyone who drags the Metacritic score down. Based on my experience with Nemesis, I think I'd be dead meat. I hope you enjoyed this look at Resident Evil 3 Remake, and sorry we don't have our own campaign footage to show off some of the cool details, but hopefully it's given you an idea of what to expect. If you are left with any questions, you can add them in the comments below. Bonus points if you write them in the style of the creepy diary entries you always find in these games. Please do click the thumbs up button and subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun if you enjoyed this, and watch our Resident Evil 2 review to kill the time. It was one of our top games of last year and is well worth checking out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.